And this half of the transfer case goes down on there. That piece right there sits up against this right here. And then this shaft goes in this hole. We have to put our magnet back in. It goes right there. And we also have to get a bead of silicone on everything. So the magnet goes right there just to catch any metal filings. It sticks to it. Now when you tear it apart, you'll find out. So we're going to clean all this off. So the silicone will stick well. Find our silicone because we left it somewhere right there. And again, it's, it doesn't take much, and there is no gasket for this, as you can see by the kit. This is uh, this is how the factory put it together in the beginning. One of the keys for me is to let this silicone dry for a while before I go ahead and put transmission fluid in this thing and put it in the truck because we're not in a hurry. If you give it 24 hours to dry, you won't end up with any mixing of silicone and transmission fluid inside. You'll have a better success of not leaking too if you let it tack up a little bit. I should mention in this big shaft we took that apart and looked everything over because as you saw we thought we were having an issue with four-wheel drive but what was actually happening was everything was out of the case a little bit which is disengaging the four-wheel drive when we were on the video the other day uh, the actual problem is the shifting linkage is a little out of adjustment and it's not going all the way into four high so then as you're going down the road it'll vibrate out so we will adjust that as we put it back in and that is this rod right here so we will clean all those threads up and make sure we can turn those nuts before we put it back in the truck where it's hard to get at and then we can do all that final adjustment so we're going to make sure that's lined up how we want it and we're just going to take this half of the case and you know the good news is we can watch that as it goes down on there's room to see what's going on there but that's the toughest part of the whole thing right there is getting that that to line up and then I'm going to get the camera lady to hand me a few of those bolts with the blue stuff on it. I didn't come prepared. I'm just sitting right there for you please. doing this kind of stuff you want to look at your bolts and see if you have bolts that are longer than others when you're taking it apart and if you do you want to make sure where they go as you can see on all of these bolts they're through and through the other end of the bolt comes out the other half of the case and you can see it but when you get into bolts that are going into something where they may touch something on the other side you want to make sure you got the right length the bolts going back in One didn't have blue on it. Yeah, there's two collars here that line everything up and that had two different bolts with washers on it. The blue is actually left over Loctite from the original installation.
take a ratchet and just check those real quick before we go any farther. Those are good. All right, so now we're back to the point where we can now get some sturdy blocking under there like that because we're not worried about that moving now because we have the have the other half of the case on that. Now we're going to work on the pump and the speedometer drive. So you remember our pump goes on there and the speedometer drive goes down in there. This actually fits into the tail shaft so it doesn't spin. Let me show you that in a little bit. Which way it goes on. <laughs> All right, so as you can see, it fits into grooves in the tail shaft, so the black housing doesn't turn. This white, white piece turns in there. So this is one of those that's a little bit tricky to put it together. This is a, you know, you have to put this on first because, well, you can't hold everything in there. So this has to go in there like that. And we just kind of have to remember to slide that down in there and turn it to line it all up as we do it. The pump gear goes down in there, just like that. And then our speedometer gear just drops on there like that. Now before we put the tail shaft housing on, we're going to go ahead and change this seal. So we'll do that and we'll be right back. You've seen us change a couple seals. So give us a second, we'll be back. So we've changed our seal and our rear tail shaft housing and as I mentioned previously I like to put just a little bit of silicone between the metal, the two metals. We've got our seal here and this one's a little interesting that they left the center section of the seal in but they perforated it so we can break it out. Um, not sure why. Seal, gasket, I guess I should call it gasket not a seal, right? So that's going to go around this thing. Interestingly enough, that does not appear to be the right seal. Gasket? Gasket. That doesn't either. Huh. I don't know. Well, when all else fails, we use silicone. But that is definitely not the right gasket. So, there was not a gasket in there, I don't believe, when we tore it apart. think now that I think about it this could have two different ad adapters going to the transmission and I think those two gaskets one is for the transfer case to the adapter and the other one is probably from the adapter to the transmission so that's probably why we have those two now that I give it just a little bit of thought my defense it has been about 30 years since I've had one of these apart. Now something we want to do before we go too much farther these bolts go inside the transfer case into a what we'll call a wet area 
So they have the ability to leak. So I'm going to put a little silicone on the threads of each one. Prior to getting everything together. Now we have to pay attention. The pump has three plastic ears on it, and the case has three plastic holes. The pump has two bigger ears and a small one. So we're going to kind of line that up carefully as we go down on there. And we're going to turn things to get it to line up how we want it. That's how the tail shaft housing goes. So now we're going to look at our pump and line all of our tabs up on our pump. And that housing should drop right down in there just like that. You don't want to force it because you'll break the gears off the pump and then the whole pump body will spin and you'll have no oil moving around the transfer case. And there's only one way this housing can go because it has an oil drain right here. So as oil comes up into here, it can run back down around through there. And then the vent is on the high side over here. Check those real quick. That little DeWalt does a pretty good job, really. So that's pretty much it. Uh, I'm going to get cleaned up a little bit. I'm going to get this less precariously perched here. And we're going to bring you back and show you, you know, shifting it through the gears and making sure everything works before we put it in the truck. So hold on while we move everything around. All right, so before we show you the workings of this mechanism and the four-wheel drive, two-wheel drive, low range and everything, you remember the seal I was mucking with on the output tail shaft? It actually goes right here, um, if I can get all my holes right. Yep, I got it on the first try that time. You'll notice the holes are not evenly spaced. So that's, that's where that seal goes. And this one, I believe, and I don't want to promise you, but I believe this goes between the spacer and the transfer case, uh, transmission, which we're not going to get into because we know ours is fine. So we just wanted to point that out. We also kind of wanted to give you a little highlight of the upcoming videos. Uh, the ball joints are up there, front U joint, and you'll notice we've picked up a metal chop saw so the, all the steel for the flatbed is in route, should be here sometime middle of the week. So let's go ahead and show you how the four wheel drive works in this and show you, you know, just test it, make sure it works before I put it in the truck. All right, so we're all together. This is our shifting fork, shifting lever. This is the part that goes onto the transmission of the truck. Your front drive shaft goes here, your rear drive shaft goes over here. So I've put a piece of white tape on here so you can see the revolutions. You'll notice the front dry shaft right now is not connected to anything, and that's because we're in two-wheel drive. So in this case, we're all the way back on our shifting lever, which is two-wheel drive. And if we go, yeah, it's a little hard to out the actual lever, but now we're in four-wheel drive. You'll see that's turning. It's all locked together. And what I want you to notice is that this and this are turning at the same speed. So if I kind of put my finger here, and we make one revolution. You see we end up back in one revolution. 
Now if I go into high, a uh, low range, you'll notice that's going to go once, twice, two and a half times to this going around once. So that's a two and a half to one reduction, you know, in, in output speed. So when the engine and transmission turns this two and a half times, the drive shaft turns one. Whereas if we're in the low range, high range. Range. yeah, if we're in high range, as Sue would say, it's hard to hit, not hit neutral there. They turn at the exact same speed. So it's a one to one all the way straight through. So that's really nice if you're backing up a trailer or something. Especially if these trucks with manual hubs on the front, you can go ahead and put the hubs into unlocked in the summer. If you've got to back up a horse trailer or the gooseneck or a camper, you can put this in low range and it's really slow. I mean, with these granny low four speeds, you can put the truck in granny low, which is probably offensive nowadays. I'm probably not supposed to say granny low anymore. I don't know. Um, low, low, whatever you want to call it. You put the transmission low, put the transfer case in low, you can actually get out of the truck and walk beside it and it's a very leisurely slow walk while the truck is putzing along so but everything seems to work all the gears seem to work there's no slipping in four-wheel drive we've got good positive catches on everything so ghosts so we're going to uh, I don't know so we're going to go ahead and we're probably going to take a break we got to run to town run some errands we're probably going to come back this afternoon and we'll put this back in and we'll show you putting it back in. Maybe we'll take the truck for a ride, try it out. We're going to clean these up, like I said. So what you have to do is you want to make sure that this is in one of the gears, in the detent like it is right there. You want to loosen these nuts up. You want to make sure the shifter on the floor is in that same gear. Then you want to adjust this, these nuts back and forth until this just lines up. Because what we believe is happening is this is just off the detent. And it's, it's really hard to hold this without the shifting lever. But we leave it's just off the detent like that because of the lever on the floor. So when you're driving down the road, it just kind of wobbles back into two-wheel drive. Because the transfer case has obviously got good detent. You know, that's, that's good and locked right in. So we just have to adjust that all up. So, thanks for watching. If you've got any questions on these new Process 208s, I'll do my best to answer them. I'm definitely not a transmission guy, but you saw there's not much to there. I did want to point out that main shaft that you saw me set down in there. We took that apart off camera carefully because there are a lot of little pieces in there. There's actually two sets of roller bearings that are not captured. So if you're not careful when you take that apart, they go everywhere. So we were really just making sure that it was actually good, that the splines for full drive weren't wore out, and that all the bushings look good, and they did. And that's where we stopped, because somebody has been in this transfer case, they have changed all the bearings and everything. They just didn't seem to change this seal or this seal. And I can understand that, because those two are pretty hard to deal with and get at. Uh, this one in particular, you have to take the yoke and everything off, as you saw. So they changed the output seal, they changed everything else, but they did not change those two. So we didn't go any deeper, but when you pull yours apart, if you're not gonna tear that apart, be very careful with that main shaft. Because when you start pulling that apart, you're going to end up with all these little roller bearings. And then you got to get out your Vaseline or, or grease and put on the inside and stack all those roller bearings back in there. Which if you're rebuilding it, you want to do that. But if you're just resealing it, you don't need to do that. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe.